2 Samuel chapter 9. The story of David and Mephibosheth. The story of Jesus Christ and the Christian. Beautiful type. And David said, we've seen David so much a type of Jesus Christ. Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now Jonathan and David were friends, best friends. They made a pact. They made a covenant before God that David would not destroy Jonathan's seed. And there was one, and there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him to, into, unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Now, Mephibosheth is going to get blessings and honor and a table spread before him and not because of who Mephibosheth is. It's because of Jonathan that Mephibosheth gets this entitlement by a pact that was made between David and Jonathan. Now David takes on God the Father as Jonathan takes on Christ Jesus the Son. And me as Mephibosheth, I don't get any glory from God except the glory of the kindness of Jonathan. And the king said unto him, Where is he? Oh, wait a minute, uh, verse 3. The king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? See that? Who's going to show kindness to this this son of Jonathan. David is. And look at David. So that I may show the kindness of God. It's David's going to show him the kindness. David takes on God. For the sake of Jesus Christ. I get the kindness of God. By Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. Not of works. At least any man both. Mephibosheth can never say after this chapter. Oh it's because of me. It's because I was lame. It's even because I was Jonathan's son. Jonathan could have had other sons. So chapter 9, fruit of the Spirit, rests upon what God has put an oath and a covenant between him and Jonathan. And I, according to Isaiah 53, and according to uh, the, the adoption of the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ, I am in that family. I have no righteousness. I have no kindness. But the kindness of God unto him. Zilba would be a type of the Holy Spirit. Goes out to Zilba. I mean in this chapter here later on he lied. No type can go 100%. Zilba is there anybody out there in the world. That is willing. To come on to me. And sit at my table. And the Holy Spirit goes out seeking. He goes out showing men judgment, showing men sin, working on their hearts. And Zilba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. I'm lame on my feet. Now you match this with Romans chapter 9. Yeah, 9. And go through for the heart man believes on uh, with the heart man believes on righteousness with mouth confession man and salvation. How shall they call on whom they have not heard? How shall they hear except a man be sent? And how beautiful are the feet? Well, that's a man that's saved. That's a man that takes the gospel, going all the world and preach the gospel. Those are beautiful feet to God. When a man has not come to Jesus Christ, he has no knowledge of Jesus Christ. He is not saved. God does not entertain those feet at all. They're lame. They go to ball games. They go to the theater. They go to music. They go to anything but praising God. Lame. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of my car. Being taken care of some, by someone else. The son of Emil and Lodibar. 
So, when I'm outside the presence of God, David, someone else is taking care of me, and it's not David. And that's not going to get me at the king's table. That's not going to get me at God's table. God, I was under religion. God, I was under science. Uh, you know, Micah took care of me. Education took care of me. God's like, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't accept that. But I was in the house of Micah. Who, who's Micah? Who? Where were you? I was in Lodi Bar. Are you known in the palace of David? Well, no. Who cares? The Bible says, as a Christian under God through Jesus Christ, I am seated in heavenly place. I'm no more in Lodi Bar. I'm out of that place. I may be on this earth right now, but I am seated. I am at the right hand. I am at the throne of God where Jesus Christ is at the right hand. I'm there. My body hasn't caught up with me yet. But I'm seated in heaven. If I were to die, I'd be absent from the body, present with the Lord. If Jonathan's son, uh, uh, Mr. if he were to die right now where we are in this, in this, this chapter, David would have no knowledge of it. Uh, okay, he can't take a dead man. I can't have a dead man come live with me. It's going to stink. And the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Emmanuel, from Lodibar. You know, God sent. God sent for me. God, Jesus Christ, left the throne, born in a manger, went to Calvary's cross. He says, I will draw men to me. I'll draw all men unto me. The Holy Spirit will draw me to God. God wants me to be saved. God will draw me to him. I have to be sent by God through the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ to be saved. I am not going to walk in. The, I'm not going to walk and knock on David's door and say, hi, David, here I am. Without no invitation. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, The son of Saul was come unto David. Look at Jonathan, Saul, David, Mephibosheth. Saul's the only one that's out. Saul would be a type of Satan. You gotta be careful there because you know, Jonathan, the type of Jesus Christ. But look, look at look at the aspect there. There's Jesus and there is the devil. And Mephibosheth is moving out of the house of Saul, and he's moving into the house of David. David's going to adopt him as his son. For Jonathan's sake, he's going to remove him out of the family of Saul. And was come unto David. He fell on his face and did reverence. Now, in my time with, with the prison ministry, you know, big bad boys today, you know, they're all hyped and all that. I'm going to walk up to my man Jesus and give him a high five. I'm just going to, I'm, I've heard people say, I'm going to walk up to God. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to explain to him why I didn't like these things. I'm going to tell God this. I'm going to you know, be mad with God for doing all this. You are not. And when you come to Jesus Christ as a sinner, you're going to fall on your face and you're going to reverence Jesus Christ. If you don't, we preach Jesus. We tell people about Jesus Christ. If they walk away angry, that's not what Jesus would do. You're offending people. We don't like that. Get out of here. Turn the music up. Shut up. Don't look at those signs. Drag your kid down the street so they don't have to see it. Whatever you do, if you do not fall on your face in reverence, you are not going to be the family of David. At this moment here, Mephibosheth could have, should I say his name, could have walked up to David and say, you know, you're the problem I'm like this. Because the fact is that the house of Saul was in war. His nurse picked him up and running and dropped the poor boy. And both his legs, be, he, he goes, this is your fault, David. Leave me alone, David. I got what I got. I don't need what you got. David, I don't want to accept your offer. To blank with you, David. And then you won't sit at David's throne. But Mephibosheth fell on his face and did reverence. That's what a born-again Bible-believing Christian does. When he got saved, he falls on his face. Oh, Jesus. There's nothing else but you. There's no other hope. There's no other way. It's you. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. 
That's acknowledging David as king and as Lord. Now, Jesus is never king of the church. God is never king of the church. But we are to be his servants. And a servant will do whatever the Lord tells them to do. And that's not in the church age today. So not only is he falling on his face, not only is he reverence David, but he's acknowledged, David, you're higher than I am. I am nothing. God, without you, I'm nothing. The very fact is that you made Adam and Eve is why I'm here today. And men had the goal to go up to their creator and say, we have a better way of, of our creation. And the Bible say in few places, you know, the pottery speaking to the potter. What do you? Well, what are you doing? Get your hands off me. And David said unto him, fear not. That's the famous words of Jesus Christ. That is the fame. You look, go in the Gospels, you look up in the concordance, the little quotation marks fear not under the Gospels if you got that way or strong or anything like that. You look how many times Jesus said that. Fear not. For I will surely show the kindness ready for Jonathan. All right, let's stop right there. I am going to heaven only by Jesus Christ. He said, well, Brother Hayward, you got a table. Your family has a table. you got gospel tracts. you got booklets. You know how to answer stuff. That's just baloney. Baloney. Unclean meat that we don't even know what's in it compared to what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. He said, well, you know, preacher, you preach on the streets every Saturday before the farmer's market. You preach Jesus Christ, and that is... What to salvation? Because if there was no salvation of Jesus Christ, what would I preach? What could I tell them? I might as well go get a liquor license or get a pharmacist license if I did not have Jesus say, here's this liquor and here's these drugs because without Jesus there's nothing else. Eat, drink, and be merry. And if it wasn't for Jonathan, Jesus say, there would be no gospel tracts. There would be no preaching of hope. And I'm only doing what God has told me to do. And when I go out and tell people about Jesus, and I pass out God, all I'm doing is telling my testimony what Jesus has done for me. I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father. Kindness of God for the Christian. A new body, no more pain, no more tears, no more death, no more sin. Forever to be in the presence of Jesus. Holy and righteous, finally. Never to say goodbye to the loved ones that are there. To see people I've never met that have received Christ as far as the testimony that I have put out there for seed. And the very fact is, I'm going before God one day because of Jesus and only because of Jesus. And if there is a pearly gate and if there is day, uh, uh Peter there, which is not. That's a lie. But if there were to be the thing, I walk up there, how or why should I let you into heaven? By the blood of Jesus Christ and only by the blood of Jesus Christ alone, nothing else. Kindness of Jonathan, thy father's sake. Now look at that. If Jonathan's a type of Jesus Christ, do you see he's type of Jesus Christ? What did the writer of 2 Samuel 9 call Jesus? The Father. Who is the Father? God. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. So as Mephibosheth, when I look at Jesus, he's also the Father. Isn't that remarkable? And will restore thee all the land that is not Christian. That is Jewish. What was that verse? That one right there, where he said, he said, Jonathan, thy father's sake. Jonathan is a type of Jesus. And the writer of 2 Samuel 9 is saying, Jonathan, the father. <laughs> right there. Now, a Christian is not after land. It may be a church is after a land, a religion, but not a Christian. And you got to remember the Old Testament Jews. They are looking for the promised land. 
That's New Jerusalem. I mean, excuse me, new, the New Earth. We get New Jerusalem. So that's where it parts for us as Christians, land. We don't get a land. But I will restore thee the land of Saul, thy father, grandfather. Plain and simple. The Bible just doesn't put the grand in there. There's nothing wrong with that. Still a father. Do you see what's occupying in 9-7? Do you see the hidden thing there? At one point, Jesus has fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. He's up on the mountain, and Satan comes along and says, I'll give you all these kingdoms in the world. After all, I got the power, and Jesus never rebuked the devil. Adam gave it up for a fruit. And when Satan's put away, he's locked up for a thousand years. Jesus Christ is king, sitting on David's throne in Israel, the land that was once under the rulership of Satan is now back to the Jews with Jesus Christ as their king. And Satan's locked up for a thousand years. And when Satan's loose, he gets an army. Poof, God kills them all. Great white throne judgment. Heavens and earth are cast away. They're gone. Here comes New Jerusalem. Here comes... Uh, and I'm saying this out or for a purpose. New Jerusalem, new heavens, Gentiles, and a new earth that has never been Satan or cursed, never been uh, I think, defiled by Satan. How's that for a land for the Jews that will obey God the Father? They're going to get the new earth. Saw so thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And Jesus, there is a table spread out. Isn't David also one type of the priest's office? Wouldn't that be great? That's the bread of the holy place. Not for Meshivatheth. He's going to eat the king's table. He's going to eat all kinds of meals. But when Jesus Christ sits as king of the Jews in the millennium. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? <laughs> yeah, what am I? Then? You realize we can't even explain what heaven's going to be for us when we get there. It's beyond fathom. Explain to me the concept, and I don't know, are we going to remember what pain is and never have pain? Explain the concept is we're never going to look for death. Explain the concept where every thought that we will do will be right. That thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Dog's an unclean animal. Worse, it's dead. And if you were to touch a dead dog, you would have to go to the tabernacle. And you would have to get the water separation. And you'd be unclean for seven days. And I think it's three days something. And you have to be clean again seven days. Or how about a, a Gentile? Did not Jesus call that woman who, who was of, of the Gentile nation, that dog, you know? And she said, well, the dog he under. He's saying, he's saying, David, God, I'm unclean. I'm not worthy. Yet, yeah, but because of Jonathan, welcome. God, I'm unclean. But because of Calvary and the blood of Jesus Christ and Acts 20, 28, because of the blood of God. Come. Uh, the, then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to all his house. So he gets all the land back. Saul is the first king. Bad king, but he's the first king of all Israel. There, thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. So the sower went out and sowed seeds. And thou shalt bring in the fruits. A hundred, oh, what is it? Thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold. Thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mithibosheth Thy master's son shall eat bread all the way at my table. Now, this, I got a note here. Philippians 4.19. Let's go take a look at that. Philippians 4.19. See what that has to say. Uh, 
Oh. As far as Mephibosheth, but my God should supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I know we're taking that verse out of context, but look what Mephibosheth's going to get. He is in the palace. He is going to have not only the food spread out for him. I guarantee David's going to have servants. Hey, that, that, that man's lame. He's mine. You better take the utmost care of him because he's Jonathan's son. Don't let me ever hear a complaint by him. So when Jesus shows up to, to Saul one day, hey, why persecute thou me? I didn't persecute you. You persecuted my people. You better treat Mephibosheth well. And he gets everything he wants in this kingdom. He says, Mephibosheth, Master says, shall eat bread all the way at my table. I guarantee at David's table is not just bread. I mean, you know, that's filling. Probably bre better bread than what we get today in the market. Now, Zilpha had 15 sons and 20 servants. That's kind of weird note in there. You know, you ever talk about Mephibosheth? And Zippa's going to lie later. But you know, God knows how many servants are under the Holy Spirit. He, I know them that are mine and call them by name. Then said Zippa unto the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. That's what the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does everything that God tells them to do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat. How many times is David going to say this? He shall eat. Verily, verily. It is very important that this is put in there. That there's going to be a table for Mephibosheth. There's going to be a table. Now let's take it away from the church for a minute. There's a table spread for the, the nation of Israel. And it's going to be in Jerusalem. And the king is going to sit there in Jerusalem on David's throne. And David will be a prince. And we're going to look at the Jewish side. God's not all done with the, with the Jews. And said the king, he shall eat at my table. Now before we read the next part, let's go to Romans 8.14. Before we read the last of that verse. A very important statement. Romans 8.14. Boy, this is a short little chapter, but boy, is it juicy. Man, you can have your steak. I'll take the Bible. One of the prophets says, I have eaten the word of God. I, I enjoy it. Uh, 8.14, Romans. Ready? For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See the Holy Spirit? If you're led by the Holy Spirit, who brought Mephibosheth to David? Ziba. They are the sons of God. Now let's go back over here. To 2 Samuel 9 and finish verse 11. As one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth has been adopted by David. I have been adopted by God because of Jesus. And I am not as one of the kings, sir. I am a son of God. I am. By the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, and by God receiving me through Jesus Christ. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. 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 And all that dwelled in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So look at, look at all the servants he gets. Maybe one day the Jews will be in the land and the Gentiles will, will be serving them. You got to look at this Jewish and you got to look at his typology of the church. But it's Jewish. So Mephibosheth, boy, every time you say his name, gets dwelled in Jerusalem. I'm going to New Jerusalem. 
I don't need to go to Holy Land. You're wasting the money going to Holy Land. For he did eat continually at the king's table. <laughs> Here's that king's table again. Now, what's that word continually mean? Eternal security. Once I've been adopted by God, I will never lose it. And was laying on both his feet. Well, I'm not lame. I won't be lame. I knew a man one time saved. He had no legs. He come up to me. I was, a, I was a new Christian. Man, I can't wait to get to heaven. I'll be jumping around, running around. Me. What? Before I knew the truth. But you know what? Lame on both his feet. I'm still a sinner. I still need 1 John 1, 9. I met a guy one time. Oh, I never sin. Oh, you're, you're sinning right there. I'm not in the presence of God yet. I am not at his table yet. I am not before the before the God's throne. So I'm still lame. I'm saved. I'm a child of God, but I'm still lame. And I need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me. Oh, but the riches of God, the riches of mercy he has. 